Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior XD Evangelist here at Adobe, and I hope you're all doing well on this Tuesday morning, afternoon, or evening. If you are tuning in live here on Behance, let me know who you are and where you're tuning in from. We have an absolutely jam-packed day. You've probably been watching several of the evangelists kick off the new updates that just shipped this morning and i'm excited to be here today showing you adobe xd 30 filled with stacks scroll groups design tokens and more before i dive into things a big hello to valentine and pascal and alberto and sam and chris cannons in the house osborne dana eric andy haven't seen andy in a while hey andy hope you're all doing well uh Sathith, if i mispronounce anyone's name i do apologize <laughs> vanille says turtle howard he's probably talking about the turtleneck, you know it's an exciting stream when the turtleneck comes out. So here's the schedule for today before we dive into things. We started off the day with Terry White and Scott Belsky. Great streams, kicking off some of the new products. We've got the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge with Kathleen. Photo co uh, compositing, that's the word I'm looking for, with Elise. The Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge with the always exciting Andrew. We've got Adobe XD prototyping with Julie and myself. Uh, Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge with Andrea and then Doodle Therapy. I love Doodle Therapy with Alice Lee. All right. Indeed, turtleneck equals serious business. All right, we're going to hop over to my screen and we are going to dive in to Adobe XD 30. I'm going to start by showing you how stacks and scroll groups works. Then we're going to end off with design tokens. Here we go. So, Here's a notes application that we've been working on. And you may find yourself in a similar situation to this where you have a very complex application with several different panes going across. You've got a navigation bar on the left. You've got a pane of notes over here. You've got details about that note over to the right. And you want to make sure that not only can you can navigate all the different panes, but you, you also want to make your life easy. You want to be able to very quickly rearrange objects within complex designs like this. Synthil is saying, waiting for some magic. Oh, the magic is coming. So let's dive in here. We've got some uh, groups set up here, group of notes. And let me zoom in so you can really see what we're doing. And you've probably made cards like this in the past. Now, in a previous update earlier this year, we shipped padding, which is a fantastic feature. And you can see it over to the right, right here. This enables content aware layout. And when you turn that on, what's essentially happening is XD is looking at the relationship between all the layers at the top and the layer at the very back, right? So if we take a look at the layers stack, we have all these layers up here and we have our background layer. So XD is looking at all that. And background layers don't have to be just a single shape. It can be Boolean objects, masks, groups, a lot of different things, right? Now, the benefit of that was you're able to dive in and you can grab some objects and move them around and the background layer automatically adjusts. However, there were some limitations, right? If you decided you wanted to increase the size of this description, those objects don't move unless you got really creative with it. Or if you want to add in some additional content, you still need to do some work. But with stacks now available, all that work, all that manual labor is all gone. So what I'm gonna do, I have that note selected, and now we have the stack option, which goes right alongside padding. I'm going to turn that on. And when you enable that, XD is going to automatically determine the orientation of your layer. So it's noticing that the layers in this group are going from top to bottom, right? And it, it determined that it's a vertical stack. If they were going from left to right or right to left, it would be a horizontal stack. And now, boop, isn't that awesome? You can just move objects around. Of course, if you wanted to increase this description, hello, right? it automatically moves. If you want to make the text larger, for example, now this is this is a, let me change this to uh, an area text. Everything enlarges, right? So it's very intelligent like that, but it gets even better. You can nest stacks within stacks. We have some tags here. They're inside of a group. I'm gonna go ahead and enable stacks just like this. It has determined that it's a horizontal stack. And now I can either drag them around just like that, right? Or I can even duplicate, Command and Control D. It's not gonna pop that duplication on top of the current selected uh, tag. It's gonna put it beside it. And now I can go ahead and 
boop, and it automatically squishes everything in. And you can continue moving things around if you need to, right? And even though it's a stack within a stack, things still move and rearrange beautifully. But it goes even further than that. It looks like there's a lot of exciting people in the chat putting random characters. I think that means you're excited, I hope so. So what we can do is we can also put stacks within stacks within stacks. We can just keep going, right? Before we do that, let's go ahead and convert this into a component because we may want to create several states of this. So I'm gonna right click and I'm going to make component. You can also do that in your properties inspector, the assets panel, a lot of different places you can make component. Boop, just like that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna make an additional state and this will be just gonna be called inactive just like that. And I'm doing this over here to the right. We introduced components and states quite a while ago. And for this one, all I'm going to do is just change the background color to a little bit of a lighter color, just like that. So we have two states, right? We have our default and our inactive. And you're gonna notice that when I converted the group into a, a component, the stack came along with it. So stacks works on groups and components as well. And now what we can do, we can take this single note, put it into a group. I'm gonna command or control G, I'll just call this notes and I'm going to turn on a stack for this overall group and I want to make sure that it's a vertical stack. And once that's set up, I can dive in, select a note and duplicate, right? I can move them around if I wanted to. I can change the states. I can continue duplicating all the way down my artboard just like that, very similar to a repeat grid. You can very simply duplicate. And if you think about it, because we're using components and a master component inside of this stack, in a sense, it kind of is a repeat grid, right? Everything will remain up to date if you edit that source component. Now, what's cool is you can also adjust the spacing just like this, just by hovering and moving. So this adjusts individual spacing, or you can hold down your shift key and adjust them all at once. So you can make sure that maybe everything is 16 pixels in between, or if you want it nice and flush, I can set it at zero pixels just like that. And now we have a bunch of notes going down our artboard, all created with stacks. And again, if I did make some changes to this, right? And I accept, it just pushes that one down. So it's a stack and a stack and a stack. And I made some changes and it just pushed that content down really nicely once I was finished editing. Adobe XD is awesome, right? Just like that. And everything works beautifully with states as well. I can just grab this note, move it on up if I wanted to. And it's fancy. Pascal saying you duplicate with command control D or holding alt. Command control D works beautifully. Uh, you can also duplicate, I believe, by right clicking and pressing duplicate. You can do that as well. Uh, alt drag doesn't work at the moment. I don't know where, the, where that is with the team, but command control D or using the menu option will work beautifully. So we have these notes inside of this pane, right? But you're noticing that the notes are extending down the pane. And we want to be able to, when we preview this prototype, to scroll. Now in the past, you can kind of get away with it by fixing all the different objects to your artboard and allowing just that to scroll. It was a bit of a pain, but now we have scroll groups in Adobe XD and watch how simple it is. I have the group selected. You can also do this by selecting the individual elements within that group if you wanted to, but I do have the group of notes selected. And over here to the right, we have additional options. We have our horizontal scroll, we have our vertical scroll and my favorite scroll, we have our horizontal and vertical scroll. So I'm gonna go ahead and press vertical and it's gonna give me these two handles, very similar to a repeat grid. We have one on the top, one in the bottom, cause this is a vertical and you can adjust where exactly that window is. Basically anything inside of this window will be visible at all times. Anything outside will be accessible upon scroll. And if you double click into the scroll group, you'll be able to see all that content. But now if I press the play button at the top, I can scroll. Right? I don't have to worry about fixing things. It just works beautifully. Let's move on to this side over here. Let's look at stacks one more time. I have this note selected. It has a lot of content inside of this option. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on stack. It automatically determined that it is a vertical stack. And now I can just start moving things around, right? I can move this up. I can duplicate this group of photos just like that. I can move it down if I wanted to. And you're noticing how fast your designing really starts to go once you really get into stacks. I can duplicate, duplicate, move things around if I wanted to. Here's a fun little trick. Even though you d defined a stack as a certain orientation, you can change it. So if I duplicate this, right, it's going to pop it down there and I might want to just change this to modified. Whoops, my caps lock. I'm screaming at Adobe XD. I'm just so excited modified and maybe I can delete this guy 
and you're noticing things are kind of moving around, right? As I'm making these changes, I'll change this to medium. And what day is it? June 16th, right? So I can go ahead and let's say put these two objects into a group. And I can just name this info in my assets panel or my layers panel. I'm going to turn on stack, which automatically determine that it is a vertical stack. And of course, just like I showed you, I can move these around and it's a stack and a stack. So I can also move the parent around if I wanted to, but watch what happens if I go ahead and switch this from a vertical stack to a horizontal stack. Ooh. So not only does it rearrange the objects inside of that stack, it also rearranges the objects in the parent stack. And now I can go ahead and just adjust the spacing. I can dive in here. I can adjust the spacing to kind of move this over if I wanted to. And there we go. We've made changes. And we can also go through and put some additional scroll groups on here. So I have this stack of photos selected, which of course I can rearrange if I wanted to. I will add a scroll group, let's say horizontal this time. I'll drag this one out to the side. I'll do the same for this one. I'll add a scroll group. It's going to be horizontal. And now when I preview, I can scroll, right? Fancy. We can also add some elements when we're dealing with stacks. So if I'm inside of this group, which is has a stack enabled, I can go ahead and grab, let's say my rectangle tool and draw one out. And you're noticing as I'm drawing this rectangle out, all of the layers are beautifully moving out of the way. And if I hop over to Finder, I can grab this great image of a mask. Boop, there we go. I can turn on horizontal and vertical scrolling. So it allows me to pan in any direction, just like that. And now I can go ahead and bring these out, just like that. And very similar to a mask, someone's asking, is Howard Canadian? I am, I'm from Toronto. I'm gonna double click on the, on the shape and I'm gonna make it larger. Very, again, very similar to a mask, right? And now once that's done and horizontal and vertical scrolling is enabled, I can press the preview button and I can pan around this map really nicely. I can still move this around, right? And again, you can adjust the spacing either all at once, just like this to make sure that all objects have, let's say 24 pixels in between them or individually. So if I wanted a little bit more space at the top here, maybe 32 pixels, for example, I can very easily do that. So there's a lot of really fun things you can do with stacks. I can also add in elements from my assets panel. So I'm going to hop over here and I'm it's still inside of this group. I do have over here, this object here and pop it in. You're noticing one more time, everything's moving out of the way as it should. I can move this up. I can adjust the spacing and hopefully you're seeing by now how fast your designing is going to go. Previously, this was, it was a pain. Uh, Samthil's asking, when is this, will be this, when will this be released? It is released. It was released late last night, early this morning. So if you don't see it, head into your Creative Cloud app, make sure to check for updates. If that doesn't work, quit the app, open it up again, and update to Adobe XD 30, which does have a new fancy icon, by the way. All of our apps do, they're quite fancy. So again, you can just whoop, drag this around, and make and, and even even more changes are coming. I believe it was confirmed by one of the engineers that in a in an update not too far in the distance, in the properties inspector, you'll be able to adjust the spacing and, and padding of your objects inside of a stack by entering values. So if you just wanted 24 pixels, you can enter 24 over to the right and you will be able to do that, right? So let me go ahead and do a few more things, make some changes, and that looks pretty good. But of course, you know, there's even more. I just love just throwing out even more things. So if you hop over here to this navigation bar on the left, you're going to notice that this particular component, in addition to being able to move it up and down within the stack, there are a few different states that have been enabled on this. There's an inactive state, right? Which basically just takes away that background. However, there's also an expanded state. And what's really cool is that when you select the expanded state, because that state is larger, everything below it moves down. So you don't have these weird overlapping elements. You can very easily just select the expanded state. Everything moves as it should, right? Now, one more thing on this particular example, we've got these massive panes, right? What if we want to rearrange those? So I have the panes group selected. I'm gonna turn on a stack. It determined that it was horizontal because there's two panes going across the artboard left to right. And I'm going to simply select the left pane and move it. So it's a stack in a stack 
it, it, I, I don't know how many stacks there are inside of this and there's scroll groups in it as well and you can just move the entire pane of content imagine what that was like before stacks was enabled I don't even want to imagine don't 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 remind me one more one more example this down here is a dashboard I've been working on and I'm gonna go ahead very quickly enable a scroll group on this Boop, just like that I'm gonna adjust this up here so I can very easily scroll down I'm also going to enable a few stacks so I can enable on the schedule and also the individual groups as well so not only can I just grab this entire morning and move it around right I can also grab the individual elements and move them but what's kind of cool is that I can dive in here I can duplicate everything rearranges really nicely I can change this Oop, right but one of the cool benefits of stacks is even though this particular stack as you can see within the properties inspector is defined vertically I can still grab this object and offset it horizontally so if you're working on schedules or Kanban boards or things like that you can move things up and down but you can also shift them over left and right isn't that fancy I think it's pretty cool and I'm gonna have lots of content on many of these tips and tricks in the coming weeks and if you want to go to letsxd.com I'm going to show you that in a second I have a few videos on scroll groups and stacks already but you know you can do that and just to show you a little bit more before we dive into design tokens very quickly I'm gonna make a few changes here I can rearrange objects just like that right if I want to add an image I can whoops I rotated it if I want to add an image I can easily do that and everything just moves really nicely right we can preview scroll over here scroll over here if I had horizontal scrolling that would work as well all right let's talk very quickly about design tokens and this is really geared at our developers so in many times a developer would want you to not only provide the hex code for a color or the font or the typeface for a character style but they might also want a very specific label that they can use inside of their code so if I go to my assets panel we don't have any colors added right just yet I'm gonna go ahead and select this element I'm gonna press the plus button I'm gonna select this element over here and press the plus button as well you know what let me change this just so it doesn't have any there we go so we have two colors we can also select this text and add a character style so by default you've got your two different colors and your hex codes and you can go ahead and double click on them and rename them as you could before but those names didn't really translate to anything it didn't appear anywhere so what I'm able to do now is I can just name this let's say primary green green and secondary green and I can just name this one over whoops I made sure to I clicked on the asset there we go and I can go ahead and double click and just name this h1 header for example right so now I've essentially given labels to my developers but I need to share those with them so I'm gonna go into prototype mode I'm gonna make sure this is my home artboard and over here to in share mode I can go through and I, of course I can share it for review so people can interact with all the different interactions that this particular artboard might have but I can also share it for development so I'm gonna go ahead and select that and I want to make sure that web is selected otherwise design tokens would not be provided so I'm gonna select web I can choose to add a password if I wanted to or I can invite people but you know what anyone's link should be okay and I'm gonna go ahead and create the link it's basically gonna take all the elements on this particular artboard or any others that are wired up upload it to the cloud and provide me with a link and here's the link right there you can also add additional links if you wanted to I'm gonna copy this link I'm gonna hop over to Safari I've got let's XD open convenient right we've got scroll groups and stacks you can also go to what's new to get an overview of the new updates to Adobe XD but let me go ahead and paste this link in here and this is the link your developers are going to look at so if you hop over here to the specs section and they select an object that has that so one of the associated colors you're gonna see over to the right you now have your label associated with it which is really cool right you can also go into this new section look at that it's pulsating because it's so new click on that it's called variables and you'll be able to see your primary green there's your secondary green if there are other colors that you did not name they'll be unnamed which makes sense right and you've also got some font families down here and right down here is your h1 
header, right? And your developers can copy this, they can download the CSS, they can do whatever they need to do in the development world. I know nothing about that stuff, but they can do what they need to do. All I know is developers have been asking for design tokens and now design tokens are available. So label your colors, label your character styles, and Talon is saying, look at all these shiny new features. Talon, you and the team, everyone, I can't take credit. I know someone tweeted, I did a great job. I did nothing. I did none of it. I just make the content. I just sit here and look pretty sometimes. Um, but the team has done an amazing job at bringing all these features to all of you in the chat, in the community. And there's a lot more coming. I can't wait to sh share some of that stuff with you. Before we wrap things up, I do want to show you one more thing. It's not necessarily related to XD30. However, there's a new plugin that just shipped today. I sneaked it last week, but it's a mind blowing plugin. So under your plugins, go to discover plugins. And if you go to the browse section, it should be one of the most recent plugins. And there it is, quick mockup. It was developed by a team at Adobe and they also created the wireframing plugin or the whiteboard plugin, sorry. And here's the plugin right here. And by default, you can browse elements and templates. So you've got a bunch of different templates for different things. You can uh, grab a template for a landing page, a sign in experience, a subscribe experience. So let me go ahead and select this one up here. It's going to create this artboard and not just like a little part of a landing page. You can see it's creating a lot of stuff. And look at the size of this artboard. It gives you a lot to work with. So if you're, you want to very quickly create a landing page, you can do that. And you can hop into elements, you can add buttons and things like that. And as you select the various elements that were provided, you'll be able to change styles and states and labels and things like that right in the panel to the left. But it gets even more exciting, right? What you can do is in addition to being able to manually add your colors and character styles and things like that, they have a themes option. And this is, when I saw this, my mind was blown. I'm gonna press themes and they have these beautiful themes that they've custom designed. And all you have to do when you select that is click on a theme. And it's gonna reskin the entire artboard. So I can go down here and I can click on, let's say, Pink Ele Elegant, it's a pretty nice theme, right? And you can still dive in and make changes to those particular buttons. And the elements change based on the theme, right? And let me show you one more theme. This is my favorite theme, the Radiance theme. It's just so out there and beautiful. And if you click on it again, some of the images change. And like I mentioned, you can click and make changes to the different buttons and elements. And there we go, right? And it's just so cool. And you can also go back. They also have, in addition to desktop themes, they have mobile themes. So I can click on this one here. It's gonna load. There we go. Here it goes and bam. So it takes the theme that you selected and it creates this beautiful looking mobile template. And that now, because Stacks is enabled, right? I've got this whole entire group selected. I'm gonna turn on Stacks. It defines it as a vertical stack and I can just move things around. I can grab this one here, move it up. So it just makes life even easier now that Stacks is enabled. I can grab these huge sections even this one down here, I can put them all into a group. I can turn on a stack vertical. I can grab this entire meet our leader section and just move it on up. Imagine again, how painful that would be before stacks ex existed. We all did it, but now you don't have to do it. You can just very easily move things around. And again, I will have a lot of content. In fact, next week, I'm going to be running the Adobe XD daily creative challenge, and it's all going to be focused on, on uh, stacks and scroll groups. So we're gonna look at a lot of use cases where many of these features are going to really come in handy. And Jack says, wait, can you define your own theme in the plugin? I don't believe you can define your own theme right now. These are all custom built by the team. However, that could be a good feature that they might wanna add at some point in the future. Now I'm curious, if I select this notes application, what would happen? I'm pretty sure nothing would happen because I haven't used the particular elements. But if you do use the elements that are provided inside of this theme, or inside of this plugin, you'll be able to skin them yourselves. So that is going to do it for me for today. A big update has been released. Go to your Creative Cloud app, download it, check for updates, and start playing around with stacks and scroll groups 
head over to letsxd.com, check out the videos, learn all about the things, and stay tuned for even more updates. And a big thank you to the entire Adobe XD team for their amazing work that they've done. Again, I can't take credit for all of any of it, <laughs> any of it, um, but it, give them a big clapping emoji in the chat if you're appreciating this update. So that'll be it for me. Stick around in just a few minutes. Cast, see you all a little bit later today with Julie, and we'll definitely be diving more into some of these features. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I will see you all next time.